to just see everything together uh, at a high from a high level view right so linear regression can be so far whatever we have seen can be summarized as follows um, linear regression is w hat ml is just the arg min over w sum over i equals 1 to n w transpose x i minus y i square now what we got is a new estimator which is a map estimator which is usually called w hat r and this r uh, stands for ridge uh, which has roots in plus classical statistics uh, we won't get into that uh, the etymology of this uh, but it is just arg min over w for our purpose sum over i equals 1 to n uh, w transpose x i minus y i squared but then what are we saying we are saying that well you should also add this term second term here which is some scaled version of gamma uh, norm w squared right so this is plus um, some lambda well lambda norm w squared so um, so this problem is called as the ridge regression problem this is called as the ridge regression where you add this extra term to your original error or loss so this was our original loss term and now you add this extra term uh, which has this bayesian viewpoint also uh, or you can think of it as adding this term to minimize your mean squared error uh, so this term is what is usually called as a regularizer so uh, so basically what what we are saying is that in addition to the loss you want to add some quantity as a penalty for for somehow preferring some type of w's right so when i say we put a prior on w and then do a bayesian modeling it means that we are preferring some types of w's and here the prior if you remember what was the prior the prior was a gaussian with zero mean where zero is a vector in d dimension and some variance right so now that variance term converts to this lambda right so this lambda um, is what is uh, uh, called as a hyperparameter which we had to cross validate but then it corresponds to the variance variance term um, but what does the prior itself tell us right so if we say the prior is zero mean sorry about that if the if we say the prior is zero mean it means that we are somehow thinking of uh, we are some we somehow want w's which which are whose length is as small as possible i mean in fact we want w's to be all zeros which is a weird thing right so why would why would we want that um, because our prior says that you know our uh, gaussian um, has mean zero right so which means that the maximum probability the mode of the distribution is at zero uh, now if you think about this one way to think about this is that the second term here which comes from the prior the lambda times norm w squared is kind of trying to say pull our w the answer towards zero which means that it's trying to make the values the components of w as small as possible right so it's because you are you are penalizing the length the norm w squared is what is getting penalized which is just the length of w itself right so you want it to be as small as possible you are trying to pull it towards zero whereas the first guy is trying to make the loss as small as possible now if it so happens that there are multiple w's which have the same loss then the w that you would prefer is the one that has the least length which means that the one that has many small components of course you will not always be able to make w as small as possible of course you cannot push it to zero and zero w is anyway useless but what is the idea behind pushing w to zero the idea behind pushing w to zero is that if you have a lot of features right so you have let's say 10000 or even a million features that you are dealing with now a lot of these features could be potentially redundant right so maybe you have height maybe you have weight maybe you have two times height plus three times weight by somehow you have a sensor which captures that let's say right so i'm giving a simple example but then when you have a lot of a lot of features a lot of redundancies could happen now which means that if a linear combination of these features is what is going to represent our w uh, our label y 
So, if you have redundant features, then there might be multiple linear combinations which might explain our dub y label. So, now what we are saying is that pick that linear combination, which means pick those set of weights that have as small length as possible, which means that the redundant features you are trying to make sure that you do not pick multiple redundant features. For example, if you had height, weight, here is an example, right. So, let us say you have height um, and you have weight and you have 2 times height plus 3 times weight. These are your 3 features, okay. And your label, let us say, is a noisy version of 3 times height plus 3 times weight. Let us say this is your label, label is a noisy version of this. Now, there are multiple ways you can, um, you can get this, right. So, um, so, one way is to say that, well, I have some quantity which is um, maybe I will say 3 times height plus 4 times weight, right. So, it is the same color. 3 times height plus 4 times weight, let us say that is our label. Now, one way to explain this is to say that I put a 1 here, I put a 1 here and I put a 1 here. So, these this is my weight for this height, this is my weight for this uh, weight meaning weightage for the feature weight and 1 is the weightage for the third feature, right. So, this is f1, this is f2, this is f3. I can have 1, 1, 1 as my weightage and then if I add these three, three things up, I get um, 3 times height plus 4 times weight which per perfectly explains this. But I could also have got the, gotten this by saying that this is just 0 and then there is some constant here and some constant here such that c, c1 times weight plus c2 times 2 times height plus 3 times weight also explains my label, right. So, now here is where I am kind of trying to avoid this redundancy. Another way to do this would be just 2, 3, 4 and 0 here, right. So, um, so, so somehow you might, you might be better off in some sense by unnecessarily, you know, avoiding picking the redundant features. Right. So, so, you want to push as many feature values to be 0 as possible assuming that most of them are redundant, right. So, that is the prior assumption somehow translates to, uh, but then whatever necessary features that you you should retain such that the loss can be minimized, you will try to retain that, right. So, that is what this prior is somehow kind, kind of trying to do that. Now, what is this lambda doing? The lambda remember is something like 1 by gamma squared where gamma squared was the variance. Right. So, if you have a very, very strong belief that most of the features are redundant, right. So, which means that all there are several w's with close to 0 values, then we would have a very small variance, right. So, which means gamma squared would be very, very small. The variance is small, which means that most mass is concentrated at around 0 according to our prior. If gamma squared is very small, 1 by gamma squared is going to be large, which means lambda will be really large, which means that this minimization is going to pay a large penalty for increasing the w, right. So, if you want to choose a w which is a larger weight, la larger length, which is norm w square is large, then it means that the amount of penalty that you are suffering for choosing a lar larger length w is lambda, which is going to be something like 1 by gamma squared, which will be large if the variance is small, which means that if you really think that all the weights are redundant, then choosing a weight which has lot of, you know, large values. Uh, sh sh I mean uh, is less preferred, right. So, you are not going, to, your w will not be such something like that, even if you minimize that. So, you can think of these two terms as balancing how much loss you want versus how, how much, you know, redundancy you want to avoid, right. So, that is what ridge regression is somehow trying to do. Uh, now, um, now one might ask, well, why can't I try to directly, you know, get as many w values to be uh, zeros as possible. Uh, is ready regression the only way to do this? Are there other ways to approach this regularization? Or in other words, how do we understand ridge regression in a better way? If and if I understand it in a better way, more geometrically, will that lead to better algorithms or slightly different types of formulations of the linear regression problem? The answer to all these questions is yes. And this will lead us to something else, uh, which is a different modified version of linear regression. Uh, for that, we need to understand ridge regression in a slightly different geometric context, which is what we will we, we will start doing next. Thank you.